Let me um, try to take this down in pitch, 12 semitones, and still play the legato here. Isn't that beautiful? Sort of sounds like alto flute almost. Or we can try to go down like two octaves instead. Wow. That's a great sound right there. That's a there. great sound, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Done. You're done. Hey everyone, my name is Dan Shimolinsky. People like to call me Shimmy, and you can too. I am a bassist, sound designer, and composer living in Los Angeles, and we are checking out the latest addition to the orchestral library that you have in Sound Paint. This is the 2001 Piccolo Shire. The piccolo is such a defined sound. I mean, whether you realize it or not, it is in way more scores and film stuff, video game stuff. I mean, it is evocative of a very specific geographic location, mood, time period. And having one this meticulously sampled in sound paint is gonna open up a huge variety of sonic possibilities, as you will see in the program section. I had an opportunity to share my programs with trolls and talk a little bit about this instrument, which of course always devolves into a conversation about musicality in general and just sound pain in general, but uh, it's a great conversation, so definitely stick around for that. Now with Piccolo Shire, you get a little over 20 unique parts, phrases, styles, with three mic positions each, giving you a total of somewhere around 60 parts. And it's just so useful and interesting and beautifully sampled, I just wanna dive straight into it. As always, I like to give you an idea of what the space this was recorded in sounds like by comparing mic positions. So let's go ahead and do that by choosing just this very first arc here. This is arc one close mic. And now we're gonna go ahead and listen to the Deca. And finally, the wide. So a really, really lovely, natural sustain, not too long of a trail on the reverb. I really like the space that they recorded this in. Now you get seven of these arcs and they are beautiful kind of just breaths of the piccolo. You get varying attacks, varying lengths of the arc, varying amplitude of the volume. It's just a really, really nice, subtle way to kind of capture the full spectrum of arcs that you would need. I'm a big fan of turning on the dynamic sustain when playing these. It definitely gives a legato vibe even though these specific parts aren't legato.
So that's arc one, arc two. I'll just pick another one at random here. Let's do arc five wide. So that one's a bit longer, a little more gradual. As you're working with this library, you can kind of pick your favorites and kind of fine tune the length and the style of arc that you're looking for. You've got some breath effects, which are always great to kind of blend and make it sound even more real. Super wide range there, as well as some clicks. I'm a big fan of doing a very, very short envelope on the clicks just to kind of isolate maybe one or two specifically. You can use that in blend with legatos or sustains. And speaking of legatos, you get three here. You get a combo part, a lyrical part, and a strong part. So just slight stylistic variances gonna really help you out based on what kind of utility you're using this for. I'm gonna go ahead and load the legato module here just to be able to kind of have complete control over my legato experience. I'm a huge fan of the polyphonic mode and messing with chord timer, legato time, just to basically get as natural of a playing experience as I can on the keyboard itself. Beautiful. Let's check out lyrical and uh, let's try monophonic just to really hear what a single line would sound like. I love how it handles just fast stuff like that, like a quick little run. I don't even really need to mess with the legato time, like it just, it handles it pretty seamlessly. Beautiful. And finally, strong, which I think just has more of a pronounced, consistent tone. And when paired with the uh, dynamic sustains, you can really, I mean, get into the meat of these. Just stunning. Then we get some one octave and two octave runs, which are always useful. <laughs> That's a little shrill. Warning to the headphone users there. And then we have some trills. Marcado, which is a favorite of mine. some one and two octave minor runs. Minor trills, of course. Some staccatissimos. And then a pair of sustains, forte and mezzo piano.
So that's a quick rundown of all of the parts that you get with the 2001 Piccolo Shire. Now we're going to head over to the program section and I'm going to bring in trolls to come talk about them with me. This was definitely a very fun library to program for. As you will soon see, there's a lot of directions that you can take these sounds in, uh, some that you might expect and some that you might not expect. So uh, hope you enjoy. So Dan, yes. like, I thought it could be interesting to do this library for a multitude of reasons. Uh -huh. But one of them is like, you're a bass player. Yeah. By heart. Yeah. Played since you were three. Yeah. This is your nature. Like, there's something interesting about saying, hey, bass player, play a piccolo flute. Yeah. Like, we're in the exact opposite spectrum of, you know, where you're coming from. Yeah. Well, I'll give you an example of when I was approaching these programs. Um, <laughs> Here we go. It's bass flute time. I bet it is. Here's one, here's one called chordal support. <laughs> Because I, I like I liked having a legato on top and then maybe being able to have different uh, support below it from like a non legato instrument. Okay. So, for example, and the cool thing is, I have the mod wheel assigned to fade out the chord. So. I can take it out if I want. That's so sweet. I love that. It was the most elegant way. I, I was thinking about trying to like pull them out with um, with with envelopes, but I ultimately found that like having manual control over that. It's interesting because the piccolo to me is is it's a very resonant beautiful instrument um and but the range is so high that i feel like other instruments you perceive these notes as very shrill but there's a sweetness to it uh, -huh. uh that happens with with the piccolo and i think that you know in sound paint you can really mess around to almost get flute like tones just by pitching them down so like that or have it sustained through if you want Yeah, it's almost like an alto flute down there. Yeah. I, I just wonder, I've never thought about this about before, but like with a violin, it's so sensitive and fragile, those top notes, it almost like has a little bit of that going on as well. Right. Oh yeah, there's a sensitivity and kind of vulnerability to the, to the sound. My personal take from this library is I love, 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 love like the vibrato that's done on these arcs. Like if we just pull up like, I don't know, arc four or whatever. I like even at the very end. It's like a, it's just, it kind of fizzles yeah. it's just fizzles out. You know me, I'm always thinking about stuff in synth terms, but it's almost like you have an LFO on the pitch, filter and the volume, right? Cuz at a certain point it's like silent to making noise at a certain at a, so I really I love the vibrato. It's such a sensitive uh, beautiful tail on all of these and the trills thank you so much for the trills because that I mean that I don't even know what the natural range of a piccolo like I don't know where we're getting into the the time stretch <laughs> category but yeah no I really I love that and, and a trick that I use on this one I have so I have three instances of the trill all pitched differently and I am countering the timing differences with the time module, so it ends at the same place. And the trills are... Oh, that's why this sound is so beefy. Okay. I did... Oh, so, sort of. Close. But yeah, I countered each each of the pitch things. So it's three instances. Yeah, because if you just take out... I mean, that... And I think another big contributor to the beef is using the digital reverb. That to me always just has a little bit of a darker, chunkier kind of sound to it. But yeah, so like I tried to match the trill speeds with the time module. Wow. By pitching down, you know, you're slowing it down, you're pitching up, you're speeding it up. So you can counter that, that effect. You know, we're also learning like using the time module, especially for instruments that have natural vibrato, actually allows us to control the vibrato. We're, we're doing vibrato it for programming speed. the strings now as well. Yeah. And it's super sweet because you can sort of, like um, we have one that's more sort of James Horner-like on some of the other flutes. Yeah. That's sort of nervous, fast kind of vibrato, like a little bit unstable, fragile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, it's, it's, that's such a cool, 
cool technique for sure. And it's just, I mean, it's beautiful. Like, I really like the mark. This is a very dark. I, I oh, filtered this, filtered this down, put it through a shimmer reverb. Um, and something I've been doing recently is shimmer reverb with pitch mix, but not transposed up an octave mm -hmm. is actually really nice. Like just the the fundamental. And I really like the the the, the marcato is just. I have a feeling that users will probably go to this even for typical flute-like things. Like, it may not necessarily be that piccolo utility I'm talking about, because it's just... It's lo I mean, it, the lower, you know, that's it's just lovely. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna heart it. <laughs> so I remember it. That, that, like, that's a great lead Dark sound, and roomy. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go for it. I'm just curious what happens once you get down the bass region with the piccolo. Maybe a little bit of distortion on the filter. That's really cool. Yeah, and then you're slowing down that vibrato, so it's just kind of like it's it's its own little engine. Let's talk a little bit about the, this new kind of style of, of main programs that we're working with, because I don't think we that's been really um, addressed. So for for if you're probably familiar with. In the past, we've done main programs where it has said the word main, and it's it's kind of just like a, a single part with an EQ and reverb and just like very simple treatment. But since we're getting all these amazing mic positions, it would make sense to at least at one click be able to have access to all of those in a program, which I think is just a, a super awesome idea. So if you ever see stuff where the program name is just the name of the part, like for example, arc one, arc two, arc three, and you load that in, you have three mic positions all right there. Typically, DECA is toggled on, and then close and wide are toggled off. In your rack section, you have all your modules. And then there is still a little bit of a subtle EQ, a touch of, of reverb, and a compressor toggled off if you want it. So um, I think that's just a really quick way. I mean, we're always about making stuff faster, and I feel like if you know that you want an arc or you want to you know, see the differences but see them in context of you know a little bit of treatment, it's really... It makes a lot of sense. So we're going to be seeing that, I think, mostly with all of the woodwind libraries and, and string stuff coming up as well, right? Yeah, I think like that's our, like for anything as like multi-microphone moving forward, we want to keep that approach. That's sure. really cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a great idea. I like these effects too. I did like a little bit, I, I made a program called Effects Experiment. Um, where I kind of just chopped up a couple a couple different breath and click effects and put it through some processing. That's a piccolo flute. <laughs> How's that possibly a piccolo flute? Hold on, let me let me try to like reverse engineer that in my mind. I like it. All right. Is, is it some kind of breath sound or is it a normal articulation? It's it's breath and click. Okay. That's why. Because I was like, there's no tonal components in this thing. I'll take I'll take I'll take all the treatment off. <laughs> so I used a combination of offset and envelopes on the clicks and the breath and just did one note sames and then I put that through a rain delay which kind of adds a little bit of a fast thing and then that goes into a bucket brigade delay with an LFO on the time so you're getting that warp kind of sound compressing compression EQ which makes a huge difference and then grain reverb just because you could. Just because I could. It's called an experiment, FX experiment. <laughs> it's a sound design experiment, but you know, there's there's definitely a use for that kind of a, a percussive hit. Where would you use the sound? I would use that sound. If I was doing some kind of ambient 
section of a score and maybe like a suspense or horror thing and i wanted a lot of like stereo motion uh with 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 sounds where it's like maybe it was a suspenseful moment where you don't really want to have anything be too identifiable and you just want it to kind of be eerie and creepy i could see burying that under some like very i mean you could you could use this whole library to score i mean you've got the bases you could do like way in the distance reverb with the the, the piccolo to kind of just like get some eerie sustained stuff um, yeah, well, let me. Well, on that note, I've got a couple suspense uh, unsettled things here. This one's literally called Unsettled. T tell me what you make of this. This is what I'm talking about. You're a bass player. I, I knew he had to sneak it in there one way or the other. Like, how can we mess up, like, the shire to become, like, some more bassy medium? Yeah. Okay, so you're sub-octaving, like, three, four octaves? Three, yeah. 48, 48. Uh, the pitch is minus 48. So that, but that's on the mod wheel, so you don't always, you can, so basically, I've got three instances of the arcs with LFOs bending the pitch mm. uh, in and out. So that's what you're getting, that kind of, like... Right? And then there's a sub octave, which That's I cool. think I had to use offset a little bit. Yeah, to because it's so low. But you can fade in however you want. So cool. But it's also giving a little bit of a kiss of analog distortion with the mod wheel too, so it's kind of making it grizzly and, and growly. <laughs> oh, that's how I got that little extra like, like rust on the top. You know, why, why, why do separate instances of this with with synth bass and stuff? You just load one in and tune yeah, it right yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love how you're using it like in a more aleatoric way. I, I just more random way, whatever we call yeah. it, but yeah. by splitting the pitches and all that stuff, that's one of the things, I mean, just microtuning, you can make a lot of effects, just... Yeah, and and that that to me is like, you know, when the day comes when we get assignable envelopes, that's that's an instance where you could, you could really tailor that motion, because we've just got free-going LFOs at this point, so it's going to be random, but you could really, I mean, you could tailor, like, exactly how much you want it to bend out and in. I feel like the Joker with the the, the yeah, long yeah, yeah. slide stuff yeah. like that. That's just like now. I feel like that's like common. But you have to you have to be able to. I guess you could if like you that. took the one you just had right now. You added time. You slowed it way down. Then you could actually do that whole Joker thing right now. Oh yeah. Oh, like grab the time tool. You're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. It, it slow all of them way down because that way, and then just gradually move them out. Well, then you're gonna get that tension. That's, That's a great sound right there. That's a there. great sound, yeah. <laughs> like that. Done. One thing that I've gotten really into lately is if you're doing a mod wheel control to control brightness or volume, like you're trying to intensify, also assigning that mod wheel to the micro pitch just to push a little sharp because naturally if you're pushing that hard into a wind instrument, there's going to be a slight pitch rise. So I did that on my lowest part here. Uh. Mm. Just a little bit of a bend just mm. to be able to kind of like make it even more unsettled, detuning the LFOs. But that's another instance where I, I tried to counter the pitch differences with, with the time module. It works great. Yeah, that does work great. Yeah, yeah. What, three decades sampling was about making it perfect? Yeah. Only for us to realize, like, and I think that dictated like a lot of the sounds from like the 80s and 90s, but oh, now right. like, oh my God, like the beauty of imperfection. Yeah, no, I'm, I to I'm, I'm with you 100%. Here's a cool thing. So, so I realized that if you speed up, um, if you speed up the parts, it, it's also giving it that kind of like, you're speeding the vibrato too. Kind of what we were talking about. That's that Horner sound. Huh? That James, James Horner.
that's not even a legato part, but it connects really, really beautifully. So, so cool. You know, I had to do some kind of key thing. That's just really honestly using offset to get kind of a punchy. That's what we were talking about earlier. Really, really nice. I cool, mean, man. yeah. Fun. Speaking of keys, <laughs> had to do this. Mellotron. <laughs> Pretty good, right? That's totally Bellatron. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was, I just, that's all that is, is just literally um, both a high pass and a low pass filter, like ladder to cut down some of the highs, high pass to scoop some of the bass stuff, and then just like a really short plate reverb. It almost sounds like there's like a fa like a phaser or some kind of LFO, but there there isn't, to my knowledge. Yeah, that is amazing, man. Like, a, cause I would have thought like you had EQ'd it. Nope, no EQ on this one. Just filters. It's totally Melatron. <laughs> it's really cool. So that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's so flexible. I mean, the, the, it's funny because like you know, I I did the mains first, just trying to like basically like be okay. Like here's all of my ideal treatments, and then that kind of in a certain way sort of freed me to be like, well, let me just see how many different directions I can pull this. And you know, I mean, that's that's how you end up with stuff like that. I was like, oh sure, like that's totally the Mellotron sound. <laughs> it's very cool. It's just a scary bend. What does that sound like in the bass? Really, really freaking good. That's a, wow. <laughs> That's really fun, yeah. With instruments, once you start putting them outside their natural range, yeah, that there's like always something new to be found. Like I found something like very non piccolo flute about down here. There's a visceral element. Like like if if I was to be like superstitious, I was like, oh, this is where you can hear like the devil speak through the demons, instrument, whatever. The demons, yeah, slowing down the records here, playing them in reverse. A hundred percent, yeah. Oh, you like this one. <laughs> The thing I like about that the most is I have the um, I have a little bit of offset, and so it's catching the breath at a slightly different part. Like it's slower, lower, so it's gonna catch more breath in the low in the low register. It's gonna get a little little more punchy and pronounced to the higher it goes. I really like that. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. Isn't that cool? It is. trill part that's trilling from a whole step below, which I can fade in if I want. So that's kind of that like, but since it's a trill and it's one of four parts, you know, it's really underneath the, the surface.
really, really nice. I mean, what a brilliant... It's really, really nice. It's so cool. And adding voices, I've also found is like, it, like if you were to add another voice, it totally handles it. Like there's no. It's so intellectual. Like it's so. I, I know it's not like AI or whatever, but it's making a decision about you know where each voice should go, and it it's totally seamless. Yeah, it's really, really Years nice. of discussions. Yeah, I believe, I totally believe that 100%. I was listening to a podcast yesterday about like scientific inventions. Yeah. And how some of them seem so like Einstein's, um, you know, law of relativity and all that. Yeah. Seems so, or gen general relativity theory is so profoundly simple when you look at it. Yeah. But to get there, man. So, so in our, without any comparison but smaller world like this is years of us trying to figure out like what's the best principles for distributing the voices in the most yeah. logical way so you can play like a piano mm -hmm. even though you're playing all sorts of instruments right one of the most beautiful aspects about something and this is completely unintended yeah. on our behalf is like it's a really interesting orchestral engine mm -hmm. you know you can take something like a piccolo and make it into all these different colors yeah and for me um just because i'm programming strings right now and some brass mm -hmm the whole idea about having the full orchestra and sound paint, mm -hmm. but exploring these sort of hybrid domains where it's still, oh, it's still a classical instrument, but yeah. it's doing something new. Yeah. I think in its totality, it's going to be like absolutely delightful to have all these sort of textures that we know, but now with some new spice added to them. That's, I mean, that's always been my understanding of the goal of sound paint libraries is like this thing, you know, but expand it and, and, and work to the nines. And, you know, it's like, if you think about it from a compositional perspective, the word is, you know, variations on a theme, right? And I feel like sound paint is a variation machine mm. on themes that mm. you're familiar with. And so, you know, as I said, it's, uh, it's, it's really, you're taking a musical approach to something technological, which I think is, is, is deep and has endless possibilities. And, you know, the fact that you're able to do it at the speed that you're able to do it at and that you have the breadth of instruments uh, is just, it's, it's an inspiration. I mean, every time I sit down, I always go in with a blank idea. I'm like, I have no idea what I want to do. You know, and and uh, that's the fun part for me is kind of letting these libraries speak to me, and where I end up is something that's unique to me, which which is the goal of all music creation, I think. We think of samples as the okay, it's about the samples, right? But for me, it's actually more the technology that carries them, and I think that's becoming more evident now that we are starting to yeah. step into the sort of next gen technologies, like oh, like we can take these old samples, yeah and make them into something much more than they were in, in older technologies. Yeah. So I think the technological exploration, but with that sort of, to your point, that sort of artistic angle to it, oh, yeah. is probably the sweet spot for, for these things. For sure. I am generally surprised, like, by putting orchestral instruments into it mm -hmm. that I thought I sort of knew. Yeah. And now I'll be like, oh my God, like there is so, I mean, they're so beautiful in their core and yeah. hundreds of years of evolution and all that stuff. Each of them, even Piccolo, I mean, I, I got that sort of a little later down the line of, yeah. of my orchestral interest, but but all of a sudden it's like, wow, like this is actually a super, super cool instrument in and, and yeah. used in so many ways. Beautiful. In a world where I feel like so many sample libraries are doing tricks and, 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 and maneuvers under the hood, you're essentially opening the hood to everybody and you're saying, take what we've done with these and, and, and mess with them, stack them, mess with the time, mess with Elgato. It's like, it's a very detail-oriented approach to all this stuff, but yeah. it's not intimidating. Like, I've never opened sound paint and been like, you know, like, where do I go? You know, it's like, I know what I want to do and I know how to get there quickly, which I think is just a beautiful kind of, in certain aspects, things that doesn't exist. Because if, you know, more complex, more complicated, more controls equals maybe more cluttered interface for the user. So, mm. um, yeah, I think it's it's super elegant and, and very cool that you can dive in without necessarily having to like blow up the whole map you know yeah 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 you know what it really is huh. it's a reflection of my childhood <laughs> tell me more <laughs> <laughs> um i had a very unorganized childhood yeah 
So for that reason, um, I started sorting things when I was very young. Mm. Um, like before I could speak, I would put things in like array of colors or in arrays in general, like uh, definitely uh, on the spectrum. Yeah. Um, but later down the line, just becoming super fascinated with this idea of, of having a lot, but sort of try to structure it and create systems for it and all that sure. stuff. I yeah. bet like some psychologists could like derive it all back to that. I, I mean, yeah, that, that, sounds, that <laughs> sounds real to me. Yeah, well, this is, I mean, it is, it is very, yeah, it's so organized and the, 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 the breadth of availability in terms of control that you have is it is not reflected in the amount that it is is you're seeing. You know, it's like this, just like just the legato module alone is so much control. And as I said, like you know, I'm messing around with how to best make the shifts and make the pivots and what kind of times I like, mm. and that's going to be different for everybody. So I think yes, you you are putting things in, you know, very organized, clean ways but it's but it's 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 ways that i feel like different people will be able to interact with in different ways yeah, yeah. it's not a one it's not a one you know organization to me is is very personal it's yeah, like no, okay, here's where i want everything okay. but i think the beauty is that this can be opened by five different programmers and they will all take very different approaches to how they work with it so it's almost like it's organized in a way that is a common language you know it's it's a language for me is how i've always viewed sound paint and and you know Everybody can use those words and the vocabulary as they want. We talked a bit about it in our conversation, but I love the sensitivity, vulnerability, and just absolute soul that exists in this library. The piccolo is absolutely one of those instruments that when you need it, you need it. Truly so much attention to detail was put into sampling this beautiful instrument, and it really is going to be a staple of my scores moving forward. There's such a journey in exploring this instrument through the lens of sound paint that really is such a unique experience and will allow your scores, your projects to stand out above the rest. So I'm definitely thrilled to add this to my sound paint family and I hope you are as well. Anyway, that's all I have time for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time. This is Shimmy signing out. Take care.